Our next guest is the mayor of New York City. Please welcome to the show, Mayor Eric Adams. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. I'm normally up late at night, leaving Zero Bond, watching your show yeah. before hanging out. I, you know? you've, I don't know when you're sleeping, because you were, <laughs> you were making the rounds of this great city, and I think that's why people are drawn uh, to your uh, term so far. How are you finding it in the early days? Uh, uh, listen, this is an amazing place, resilient. You know, never bet against New York. I we, think that's a very... we, we come back. We come back stronger. Better than ever, you know, we went through a, through a difficult period during COVID, uh, but when you are out and New York is, uh, we're just ready. The way goes New York goes America, the way goes America goes the globe. It starts here in New York City. Well, that's very exciting. Are you uh, reaching out to any of the people who've held the job previously? Yes, all the time. Uh, you know, Mayor Bloomberg, who is a good friend, Mayor de Blasio, but also mayors throughout the city. Mayor Suarez and I, we're good friends. We're competitive. I'm saying to all those New Yorkers who went to Miami, uh, get your butt back to New York. <laughs> right, yeah. city. I think, you know, ultimately <laughs> they're realizing they made a mistake when uh, they went down to Florida. It's not New York listen, City. Listen, you could only have but so much sun. You could only ride up and down that beach every once in a while. New York, we have it all. Yeah, we have it. At all. Now, yeah. I have a, uh, maybe you can answer a question for me. When does a person officially become a New Yorker? How long do you have to live here? Uh, probably a combination. When you could uh, get on the subway station and you could get a seat before anyone else, when you could navigate that. Uh -huh. I think that is from day one. When you come to, to New York and realize the power of our diversity, that's our secret weapon. And if you're comfortable in any neighborhood, you could walk into a Chinese restaurant, have a Russian cook make you an Italian dish that he learned from his <laughs> Romanian girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Only in New York. Only in New York right. City do you get all those things. <laughs> you mentioned the subway. I will say, you know, obviously this is a difficult time for the subway. Uh, where there's uh, you know, homelessness, uh, there are mental health issues. I will also say that I was very happy to see you and the governor uh, addressing this as a problem together. We've obviously gone through a tough period of time where the governor and the mayor of this uh, city did not get along particularly well. Um, are you, do you feel bullish about the future of the subway system? Do you think that you can make a change? And how do you deal with the homelessness that is, you know, plaguing the subway system in a way that's humane? A combination. When I started my law enforcement career, I was a transit police officer during the 80s. Uh, we rode alone without a radio that operated. It was something where you saw graffiti everywhere, crime, drugs, and we made that transformation. We could do it again, but we have to do it in a humane way. Uh, the subway system is a microcosm of the pain people are feeling. And if we go down there and just displace them without dealing with that pain, then we are just kicking the can down the road. We have a comprehensive plan that is going to put people in housing, deal with their mental health issues, but also set the standard. You can't be on the train uh, shooting up drugs, pushing people on the tracks, committing crimes, barbecuing. No, this is our transportation system. Yeah. And so we want to send the right message that people should feel, feel safe. That's the lifeblood of our city. If it's not safe, it's the great equalizer. No matter how much you make, you could be from Wall Street or live on my street. You take the subway system, we're all the same. And I want a good, safe, clean, affordable, reliable subway system. And I'm going to give that to New Yorkers. I think that's something we could use. Two things I believe to be true. I believe this is the greatest city in the world. I hope I live here forever. I <laughs> believe there's way too much garbage on the yes. street. Yes. Um, how, do, how does that, you know, there are obviously a lot of other cities in this country that uh, have large populations, not this big, that do not have that problem. You know, and, you, and you're right. And so what I have the team doing, uh, we cre we're creating what we call a um, emerging market innovation hub in our city. And we want to go all over the globe and find out what are people doing differently. So my goal is there's some places like Buenos Aires and others where they're not putting garbage on the street. 
They put it into bins at the end of corners so we could have clean streets. So we want to do things differently. I don't want to think outside the box. I want to destroy the darn box. New York is supposed to lead the way, and garbage is one way. We, we don't want the rodents. I'm scared as hell as rats. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very, I mean, right. you're really facing your fears by taking on this job, yeah. <laughs> so we, we want to deal with the garbage on the street, the perception of filth. Uh, the street homelessness. We don't feel safe in our city anymore, and trash plays a role in that. Cleanliness is next, next to godliness. That's what I keep hearing, and <laughs> I, I think you're right on that. Um, you are, uh, you're going to be facing uh, some protesters on the steps of City Hall tomorrow. Yes. Um, some LGBTQ organizations are upset with three appointments you made. These are people who've said some pretty hateful things about uh, gay people in the past. They've apologized. Their apologies did coincide with their appointments. And how do you, what do you say to a community? And I should also note, you've always been out in front. You have a great record on this. So what do you say to people who are disappointed by those appointments? This is such an important and significant moment for our city, because you're right. When you look at the record of making the, the important vote for marriage, uh, uh, gender, uh, stand, even as a police captain, standing with members of the LGBTQ plus community. And so here we are, when I voted for marriage, my brother-in-law told me, you could never come back in my church again. He later apologized for it because he, he knew he was wrong, and I spoke with him. We must move from the cancer culture to the consultation culture. We have to take people. Don't meet them where they are. See them where they are, or I should say meet them where they are and take them where they ought to be. All of these, you know, people romanticize now about marriage. But go back there and look what America was. President Obama was against marriage. Many of our elected officials were against marriage. So when I was standing on the Senate floor saying that, no, people have the right to marry the people they love, no matter what their gender may be, there were a lot of people in America and New York who demonized folks like me. Now they came along. We should be in a position of converting people to be at the right place, because we got more battles ahead of us. You know, marriage was just one of them. And so I'm saying to the members of the LGBT community, you talk about Eric Adams. We fought together to get here. So you have the right to protest. You're going to come into Side City Hall and sit down and speak with me, and we're going to talk. But we're going to go out there and show people that we need to be with those who are transgenders, because even the transgenders believe that members of the community have been mean to them. We're going to convert people to be who we ought to be, not who they have been. And all that's right. what I'm going to well, do. Well, I, I wish you all the luck with that, because I think that is an important journey. You, um, I want to end by uh, remarking on the fact that you're a very clean eater, even though you know, there's a hard city to eat clean in. Uh, you're a vegan. You eat a little fish. I, 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 no, I'm a plant-based eater. You know, I want to keep my body tight. I got great abs. Yeah. I have a nice firm behind. Everybody was saying that. that Everybody was saying that. You, uh, you did a press conference recently with a smoothie you drink every day, yes. and people uh, remarked on the fact this did not look like a delicious smoothie. <laughs> Um, what, uh, how did it taste, Mayor, and be honest? No, listen, first of all, don't look at the, you know, the way that it looks. Blueberries are inside there, uh -huh. uh, cacao powder, yeah. uh, maca powder, um, spinach, kale. That's how I start my day every day. All right. You know, and we want people to enjoy the, the fountain of youth uh, is in your food. And if you eat right, you're going to look right, and you're going to be right to yourself and to others. All right. Well, you know what? I can't think of a better place to leave it than that. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. That's Mayor Eric Adams, everybody. We'll be right back with more Late Night.